Okay, people. Hi, everyone. We are here from a new webinar from SoJava, and today we have a very special guest here, Mr. Kirk Pepperdine. Uh, he's in Brazil for Kikom, and we have a little conversation here. We are having some coffee. And <laughs> uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for receiving us here. Oh. Thank you for accepting our invitation. <laughs> it's a pleasure. It's fun to be here. Yeah, first uh, time in Brazil, right? First time in Brazil. First time in South. Sao Paulo, so yeah, yeah, it's kind of, I haven't seen anything yet, so I can't say <laughs> anything except for there's definitely a lot of beef around here, <laughs> a lot of cows. A lot of bar barbecue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A lot of barbecues, yes, exactly. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, pretty good. Okay. Good stuff. Are you enjoying? The, that part, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and the, uh, the conference so far has been excellent, so the QCon conferences are always well put together and and I think there's always lots of interesting talks and and things going on. So yeah, it's, it's brilliant. Yeah, uh, brilliant have, you, have you already gave your talk, right? <clears throat> yeah, excuse me. I gave my talk on Monday morning. Monday morning. Yeah, I was talking about uh, um, mostly about uh, JIT optimizations and how your how your code can um, um, affect JIT optimizations and just little tweaks you can make your code that actually makes your code better but also helps the JIT compiler uh, uh, do better with it also. So yeah, so it's a fun little talk I guess. Yeah. At least I thought so. <laughs> okay, so uh, Kirk, we are almost on the release moment of uh, the new versions of Java and Java E. Yeah. You have some expectations about uh, bug fixes, improvements, uh, some performance for, improvements. For Java 9? Or? Yeah, for Java 9. Um, <coughs> Something related to JVM, maybe. Java 9 is going to be an, an exceptionally wow. epic release, I believe, for um, a number of, uh, uh, of different reasons. Um, first, I think one of the biggest changes is simply going to be um, Jigsaw. Yeah. And, um, you know, my experience with decoupling code bases tells me, well, told me when they first proposed it, that, like, this isn't going to be an easy thing to do. And I think that, uh, you know, Mark Reinhold did a lot of work, and he's done a really, really amazing job um, actually getting as far as he has, but the fear is he's simply not done. And uh, we don't know if it's going to hold up the release of, uh, of Java 9 now or not. I mean, of course, we hope not, and we hope that Mark makes the final breakthroughs that he needs to to, to, get, the, you know, to get everything working, but right now I think there's some very serious deficiencies in the sense that there's a lot of tooling that doesn't work in Java 9 and um, there's more proposals on the table that would indicate that they're willing to break more of the tooling chain and in order to get in order to get the job done and uh, so this this is a real concern because <clears throat> you know tooling I mean one of the success stories behind Java has been Know, the phenomenal amount of tooling that we have to, to, to help us get stuff done or figure stuff out or you know and and um, and to break the tooling chain in my humble opinion or not be so cognizant of the tooling chain saying well we'll pick it up later is it's a huge mistake in the sense that um, you know they'll release nine but then no one's going to be able to use it because the tools that they Come to rely on and are dependent upon, they're simply not going to be there for them in Java 9. It's really easy, but it's not done. It's yeah. Not, it's not ready. <clears throat> well, I mean, uh, yeah, you, you have to release some things sometimes, like, you know, so that part I got. And, you know, I, I have a lot of sympathy for Mark because I think, you know, he's taken on a, I would say, an almost impossible task. And, and he's made it much, much, much farther than I figured that he would, um, you know, uh, he's, he's almost done, I mean, he, and, and if he does pull it off, it's like, you know, kudos to him, but, you know, 
right now because of that and a few other things. There, there are some some serious deficiencies that are going to make adoption of nine uh, very problematic, which is a shame because there are, is there are a lot of other wonderful things coming in that release. Um, you know the, that uh, I think are are uh, are needed or are, are going to be useful at least. Sure. And, uh, so, you know, there will, of course, be the performance improvements. We're going to see, I think, significant improvements to the G1 garbage collector. Um, since that's going to be the default collector, and then, of course, that's all that's still needed. And, and um, there's, there's sort of a, like, re React framework that's coming in that's going to be drop off of the wonderful work that Brian Getz has done with lambdas and streams and things like that. And, you know, and and really they're they're setting themselves up for Java ten where we're gonna get even you know other features that are gonna come into play in Java ten that are that are that are I think absolutely necessary. They're they're needed to keep the JVM relevant in today's computing with today's computing platforms. Yeah. So you think you, you may have some more delay for the release or not? They will release in a way and will respect another... I, I don't think they can release the way things are today. I know that these guys are working really, really hard to make sure they get everything right. And they want people to try things and tell them what's breaking and, you know, just basically putting everything out there that they can so they can just say, okay, you know, so the, the, the release is as clean as possible. So, so it's, it's, it's not that, um, it's not that they're not trying, it's not that they're not clever, it's just the, the, the piece of work they've taken on is a phenomenally difficult thing to do. It's a huge job. It's a huge job. It, you have to be incredibly clever in order to be able to do things like this or even consider doing them. I think most people have given up by now. You know, it said, you know, just simply not possible. Um, so I think it's, it's a credit that they've been able to get this, but on the other hand, you have to look at it and say, okay, you know, at what cost? You know, so it's, it's a tricky thing. So, I'm, you know, my fingers crossed. I really hope that Mark is able to, you know, put the final nail on it. And, uh, and, and get the delivery out on time. And yeah, we yeah, hope the, we all are hoping that'll be a huge burden off of his shoulders, I'm sure. And uh, you know, he should feel good about it. You know, yeah. well, it, that's, that's it's a great job. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's an incredible accomplishment. Yeah. You are a performance guy, performance specialist. Yeah. Uh, what we should expect from the performance specific uh, in Java 9 on JVM some some things on you know, garbage collection or another point or well um, so let's see we've been talking about the G1 GC since about 2008 or 7 or something like that yeah and um, yeah so like almost 10 years now and I think what's emerging today is a collector that, um, if it works for you, it works very well. If it doesn't, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, like, it's difficult. It's just a difficult thing to deal with. And uh, we're slowly learning how to tune it. But of course, as we learn how to tune it, then the Oracle guys are changing the implementation to make it better, which means that everything that we've learned sort of becomes questionable. Okay. Um, so, you know, so pretty much nothing that I'm doing today I expect to survive when Java 9 finally comes out in terms of tuning uh, garbage collectors. Um, I mean, the, the, the big promise was that, you know, people wouldn't have to tune collectors after this, and, uh, I, I, you know, we, and we see cases where that, that's exactly what happens, but I see plenty more where we, we simply have to go in and do something because of, you know, one issue or not. I, I, th I think there's just, at issues, there's a whole bunch of just moving parts in there. <clears throat> and, you know, and, and if you look at each application, each application, I mean, it's really all about allocating, uh, you know, 
grabbing memory and then taking and recovering it, right? And there's different patterns and flows to how that happens. And each of the patterns and flows are unique to your particular application. It doesn't really have any, it doesn't really matter what your application is doing. That's sort of like orthogonal to that because all applications allocate, all applications release. Right. So from the garbage collector allocation point of view, everything sort of looks the same. Okay. Um, so, so the so really the issue is what does that pattern actually look like? And then how do you make sure all of the different moving parts inside the memory management module of the JVM cope with that particular signal that they're getting in terms of allocations and, and, uh, and, and recoveries that they, that they need to be doing. And so if your signal happens to be in the band where it fits how the JVM is configured by default, or you know, as you resize, things get configured, resize, and things like that. So if it all fits, then life is wonderful. If not, trying to reconfigure an individual component generally has consequences for some of the other components, and you get this sort of emergent behavior happening inside the package collector, and at that point it becomes very, very difficult for, to predict what the effect of um, changing any of the other configurations of any of the other moving parts is going to have on the overall system. It's tricky, very tricky. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really almost completely unpredictable. So we will do things and we'll get results like we expect, and then we'll do things and you'll get results that, you, that you're looking at scratching your head going, okay, you know, this doesn't, you don't, you know, you have to dig around to figure out, okay, why did this happen? So, yeah, it's, it's tricky. But, uh, you know, I, th I think... I think it, in general, the, the the whole thing is moving in the correct direction. Nice, <laughs> nice to hear. Uh, we have we have a big difference related to performance between Java versions, JVM versions, yeah. from seven to eight, <clears throat> from eight to nine. We have a big difference related to performance. Yeah, generally it gets faster. Yeah. Not always, not for everything, but I think in the general case, you get a. You know, so, you know, I run a performance feeding workshop and I wrote a bunch of exercises and, you know, I spend a lot of time trying to make sure that they run nicely on all the different versions and, you know, every once in a while, one of the exercises just stops working. It doesn't give the results that you were getting in the past, mostly because the engineers went in and they just develop that part of the JVM and all of a sudden the, the bad effect that it was counting on to make the program run poorly just simply goes away. You know, and then you just get a performance boost, which means my benchmark no longer has an interesting performance characteristic that you can use to show off how things work for this particular version. And you know, it's, and that's good. That's that really means that we're you know, the, the, JVM is getting better, better. It's, still, it's still getting faster, it's still, it's, it's progressing. Yeah. Good news. Yeah, that's for awesome. everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we all know that performance is a big, big subject when we talk about software development. Uh, we should be coding, uh, think about performance. What mm -hmm. kind of tips uh, you, you would give to other developers? Don't Maybe. think about performance. Don't think? <laughs> no. I, I, this is, yeah, don't think about performance. If you're thinking about perform, I mean, architecturally, you're gonna have to lay out a good, you know, good solid architecture that you know is going to scale, not have, um, not, not be hindered by couplings or transactional qualities and things like that that are gonna reduce scalability. So, the, so I think in this case, you have to have, a, you have to be cognizant of uh, queuing theories, like little is long, right? Effects of serialization, figuring out where the points of serialization are in your architecture and seeing if you can bust them up, right? If you don't need them, you know, do I actually need a transaction? Do I need a, a, like a two-phase commit here? Because I know that those things are going to, you know, have devastating effects on the throughput of the entire system as opposed to if I can just have maybe eventual consistency or something like that, then then 
I don't need those two phase commit things and uh, the result is that uh, you know I'm generally going to have a system, system that's more scalable and it's going to uh, you just have higher throughput in general, right? So if you get it, so if you get architecturally, you get some basis, you know, um, some found, strong foundation there. Then the rest is just coding for correctness. And if you're following good coding practices, you know, localized variables, small methods, you go through the solid principles, the responsibility. You know, um, <clears throat> inversion. You know, dependency inversions, and, and 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 you know, just all the good things. Be careful of the couplings. Be aware that you not only have implicit couplings, but you also are going to have. Um, sorry, let me restart. Just be aware that you're not only going to have explicit couplings, but you're also going to have implicit couplings that are quote unquote hidden from you. And um, so if you are controlling the couplings and, and you know just doing those good coding things, then the chances of you running into a real serious performance problem with a well architected system is fairly low. And if you do, then you can just tackle that part of the system. Sure. You know? Isolate the problem. <clears throat> yeah. Just yeah. And, I, and I, you know, in this case, I think. Um, it's one client that we work with, which is doing this in a brilliant way. They're <coughs> they're able to fork their production traffic off onto the test environment. Their test environment is running twenty four seven. It's always testing. So every time they deploy into their into their test environment, right? They're 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 automatically testing their system from live production data coming in live rates and stuff like that. So they know precisely if, how their system is performing and they know if they have any performance regressions almost immediately and they can go in and solve the performance regression right then and there on the spot. If any new code that goes wrong, he, he's ready to check that. Bingo, right. So they have a lot of testing before and then they'll deploy into the test environment and then that's it. It's awesome. It's, it's a really, it's a really awesome process, and it really helps them uh, obtain really nice results when they roll the application out to the production environment. Well, actually, the rollout is very easy. They take their test environment and they make it their production environment, and they take their production environment and make it their test environment. So they just do it like that in place swap. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's it's really really cool, and you, and you, and you see other. Companies coming up with different techniques that basically, uh, in my opinion, are obsolete in test environments. So they can see in a, in a safe way what's happening uh, to the code in a production environment. And they can do the testing and everything in the production environment. Sure. So the key is to have a good architecture basis. Yeah. Uh, following good, good coding good practices. Good practices. Yes. And we are good. <laughs> and you're good. And you're, most, most you're cases. be good in most cases. Yeah. yeah. There'll be a little bit of tuning, uh, different components, stuff like technical tuning, is what we call it, just like flipping knobs, and after that, you should be done. Oh, awesome. Yeah? Uh, uh, we have many buzzwords today, like microprofile, like... Uh, Microprofile? <laughs> yeah. yeah, like microservice, microservice uh, yeah. containers, yeah. new Java versions, whatever. Yeah. There are some, some of the that buzzwords that we should be investing our time right now Thinking our career in long term to, um, to improve our careers. Do you, do you see some of that that buzzwords that will be really last for a long time? Microservices, I think, are going to be here forever. Yeah. Um, uh, and I say this is because um, <clears throat> if you look at um, okay, so way back when when I first started, the first really large distributed system I worked on uh, was based on all of the principles of, that you see within microservices today. And it was probably one of the most successful applications that I actually worked on in terms of um, durability and you know, all of the other things that come in scalability and things like that. So it's, uh, and it, was an, it was an amazing project. Very feel very fortunate to uh, work on it, and at that point you could see the power of properly partitioning 
um, uh, your the problem and, and building a, a solid backplane that, that you can use to communicate with all of the different components and things like that. Um, so in my mind, anything that started to look like that was something that you should probably pay attention to. And, um, and microservices looks like that. Um, so it's definitely something that you should, that, that I feel that people should pay attention to. Um, you know, at, at that point in time, it, it just opened these type of architectures just open up so many different possibilities or different and much better ways of doing things that, uh, well, I mean, one of the things, I think this is probably the most important thing is just the ability to experiment in production environments. Okay. Um, microservice styled architectures allow you to experiment run many experiments, some of them all at the same time, right, and just repeat the experiments. Roll them over as fast as you, as, as fast as you can run, right? You don't have any constraints on, or not many constraints on how fast you can actually run all of those things. And, um, and the thing is, like, these things just make a huge difference. Right to the ability, the team's ability to adapt to change or maintain change or just deploy, um, and that ripples out into how uh, organizations are structured. Right, so, it's, so, so the ramifications of this are just like very broad. You know, microservices, in my humble opinion, should pretty much obsolete broken test environments. <laughs> Right, because most of the test environments are broken in very, very fundamental ways. So, so, so we have to wave over to Bodell is uh, to give an excellent talk yesterday on, on the perfect language at QCon. It was very, very nice to see him speak. So, you think in microprofile we will have uh, some key key role on the, the process? For, yeah, well, uh, you know that and that might be the. The current buzzword in terms of like you know how do we structure these things? So, yes, yeah. I mean, you necessarily have to. It might not be the best way, but you know that's the current way. So you got to pay attention, sure. Sure. right? And so containers go with that picture, obviously. So you have to pay attention to them. I'm not really. I'm. I've never really been a, a fan of containers the way that they've been impl implemented. But I mean, they do have their uses. And people are using them for, uh, you know, for different reasons. So I think as long as you use them correctly, they're okay. But you know, you know if, if you have really low latency performance concerns, then the containers will get in the way. So, uh, Kirk, you are a very experienced professional. You are one of the first Java champions, right? Uh, I think I was in the second wave or so. Yeah, second wave. Uh, uh, 2006, Java. right? 2006, that's correct, yes. Yeah. Uh, I believe that Java champions are uh, <coughs> reference for us in the Java community. Are people that are helping the, the whole ecosystem to, to improve. If a developer wants to become a Java champion, uh, or this kind of reference that are Java champions, uh, uh. what should what he or she should be doing right now? What should invest in their time? Do what you love. Yeah. Just get into the community and do what you love and share the love. That's yeah. all. I mean, I didn't do anything special to become a Java champion. It's nothing I was looking for. I mean, well, the program was new, so I didn't even know about it, right? True. So, what was I doing? Well, I was writing about Java, speaking about Java. Um, we're involved in different aspects of Java, promoting different things uh, for, that different people were doing. Just, you know, just generally having fun. So um, basically sharing, helping, sharing, helping, helping spreading ideas, and, you know, just, yeah, exactly. involved. Yeah. Just, just, you know, just, just be passionate about what you do, sure. right? And just have fun. I, I, I don't think you should do that to become a job champion. Sure. You should just do it, because if you don't like what you're doing, then... Go we'll find another. Yeah. Another thing, yeah. Well, yeah. Try to find. There's lots of fun things you know, to do. So, sure. but, you know, it, it's more for your life or your lifestyle, right? You want to be doing something you don't like to be doing for the rest of your life. It's just, I can't imagine a more dreadful thing. Yeah. 
So, it's terrible. Uh, are there any resources like books, uh, blogs, podcasts, or anything that you would you recommend for Java developers to improve their career? Uh, Java developers? <coughs> um, any reference, any material? I, you know, it, it, the, the types of references, I, I think it's just get involved with groups that are interested in the same thing as you are. That you can easily find groups. There's all kinds of social groups around there. So, uh, and there's so many different things going on in the Java community. Well, I actually, the whole development community that you can, if you're interested in something, you can search it out and find the like minded people and just uh, and group up with them. And they will lead you to the resources that will help you further understand the problem that you're trying to. Uh, Because the resources change a lot. Thank you. Sorry? <laughs> no, because the resources change a lot, a lot also. Because the new um, Yeah, but it. if you're in that group, they will. You know, but I care about performance, so what do we do? We started uh, mailing lists, performance groups, and things like that. And different people join different groups and different communities. But every finger in each of the little groups, and <clears throat> we all talk about performance. So guess what happens? Something new happens, you get a link, you know, you can go out and explore for a bit, share what you found. So other people benefit also, True. you know. So so you just have those types of conversations in your everyday life, and you will be up to date. I mean, if you, if you go into your cubes, if you head in your computer, you type out code all day, and at the end of the day you quit, and then go off and do something else, which you probably should be doing anyways, um, obviously. But you know, if you don't stick your head up under the cube and look at the bigger, broader world, every day, you, eventually you will get left behind. Yeah. So again, the the key is getting involved, right? To, to participate, yeah. share. Yeah, just yeah, just participate. Find find some time to participate. True. Right. That's, that's it. That's all you have to do. Yeah. <laughs> just get involved. Nice. Everything else will come. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, you have any final thoughts, final words for the, the community, for the the, the Sojava guys that we watched our videos? It's a great community. Uh, it's, it's a very diverse. We don't get along. We argue about all kinds of things. That's what makes it fun. <laughs> so thank you again for your time. Thank you for accepting your invitation. Thank you. Hope you are liking Brazil and come back. <laughs> Hope we can see each other. I'll be able to tell you more after today. So I'm finally going to probably go out and see things, assuming that the weather cooperates somewhat. Yeah. Awesome. So, thank, thank you, you very much. much yeah. Have a good day. Bye you bye. You too. Bye bye. Hey guys, thank you for your time. Thank you for accepting our invitation to watch the, this video. Uh, hope it's, it's a good content for you. And click on subscribe on the YouTube. And we we'll see each other again. Bye bye. Amen.